Today we're going to calculate a classic limit. And this type of limit is something you might see within a real analysis class when you're working with sequences of numbers. So in particular, what we will show today is that the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the binomial coefficient 2n choose n is equal to 4. Sometimes this is called a central binomial coefficient, kind of by the way. Now, let's recall by the definition of binomial coefficients, we know that 2n choose n is 2n factorial over n factorial times n factorial. And our approach here will be to bound 2n choose n between two sequences for which we can calculate their limits a little bit more simply. Okay, so let's get started. So we've got 2n choose n. So I'm going to write that via the definition again. So we've got 2n factorial over n factorial times n factorial. And now I'll take that 2n factorial and expand it a little bit so that we can look at it. So this is going to be 2n times 2n minus 1 times 2n minus 2 times 2n minus 3 all the way down 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Great. And then in the denominator, we still have n factorial times n factorial. I'll just leave those as is. And now we're going to approach this creation of our inequality by replacing terms in the product of the numerator with either larger or smaller numbers depending on if we're trying to pin this from above or below. And we'll start by replacing some of these numbers with larger numbers. So in particular, we'll take this 2n minus 1 and we'll replace it with 2n. So that's a larger number. And then we'll replace this 2n minus 3 with 2n minus 2. So that's a larger number as well. And then finally, we'll replace 3 with the number 4 and 1 with the number 2. So let's see, like I said, that's going to give us something larger. And what we'll get is 2n times 2n times 2n minus 2 times 2n minus 2 all the way down 4 times 4 times 2 times 2 and then this is all over n factorial times n factorial. And now maybe you can kind of see where we're going. We can factor a 2 out of every one of these terms. But how many terms are there? There are exactly 2n terms. So if we think about it as pairs of terms, we've got n pairs of terms and we can factor a 4 out of each of those. So we can factor a 4 out of this, a 4 out of this, and so on and so forth. So this will give us 4 times n times n. This will give us 4 times n minus 1 times n minus 1. Down here, this will give us 4 times 2 times 2, and then this will give us 4 times 1 times 1. Nice. But now we can group these things together, this n, this n minus 1, all the way down to this 2, this 1, and that'll cancel with this n factorial. Great. But we can we can group these, the second n, the second n minus 1, the second 2, and the second 1, and cancel with the other n factorial. Okay, so that's good. So what we're left with is n fours in the numerator. So we've got this is equal to four to the n. So that means four to the n is larger than our central binomial coefficient. Let's put that bound over here. Okay, now let's work on the lower bound. We just determined an upper bound for our central binomial coefficient. Now we'll consider a lower bound or we will construct a lower bound. And we'll do that by taking terms in the product of the numerator and replacing them with smaller numbers. So we're going to leave this 2n kind of by itself, and then we'll take this 2n minus 1 and replace it with 2n minus 2. We'll take this next number, which is 2n minus 3, and replace it with 2n minus 4. We'll take this number 3 and replace it with 2, and then we'll multiply an additional 1 on there. So let's rewrite what we have in the numerator. So we'll have 2n. So like I said, that's kind of by itself. And then we'll have 2n minus 2 times 2n 
minus 4 all the way down to 4 times 2. But we have two copies of each of those, so let's square each of these. Great. And then in the denominator, we have an n factorial. Great, and I forgot this should have been an inequality, not an equality. So in this case, the inequality is going the other direction. Now we can factor a two out of each of these and let's see what we'll be left with. So we'll have a two times n, but factoring a two out of each of these since it's squared will give us a four and we have n minus one such fours. So this is four to the n minus one and then we'll have n minus one factorial, but we'll have two copies of it. I'll write that as n minus one factorial times n minus one factorial. And then in the denominator, we still have n factorial times n factorial. I'll take that and write it as n times n minus 1 factorial. And then another n times n minus 1 factorial, just for ease of simplification. Now, let's cancel some things out. So I can take this n, cancel this n, this n minus 1 factorial, and cancel this n minus 1 factorial. Finally, this second n minus 1 factorial cancels its pair in the denominator. Next, I can multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2. That turns this 2 into a 4. Then I can combine the 4 and the 4n minus 1, and that gives me 4 to the n over what's left in the denominator, 2 times n. So that gives me my lower bound over here of 4 to the n over 2 times n. And now it's a matter of calculating the limit of the nth roots of these that are bounding our central binomial coefficient. So let's do that. To finish this thing off, we're gonna calculate the limit of the nth roots of these two upper and lower bounds for our central binomial coefficient, and that will do it. Okay, so this first one is really easy because the nth root of four to the n is just four. So this turns into the limit as n approaches infinity of the number four, which is four, because the limit of a constant sequence is always just that constant. This one's a little bit trickier. So what we'll do here is distribute the root over the numerator and the denominator. I can take the four out and that leaves me with the limit as n goes to infinity of one over the nth root of two n. Great. Now I'm gonna do a change of variables so that I can use L'Hopital's rule a little bit more easily. So what I'll do is I'll set n equal to one over two x. Now let's notice as n goes to infinity, x goes to zero from above. So let's see what we've got. So that's gonna give us four and then the limit as x goes to zero from above of x to the power 2x. That's because we've got the nth root, which is like the one over n power. So in this case, this would be the 2x power. But now we need to calculate this. Notice this is an indeterminate form of type zero to infinity. So we have to use L'Hopital's rule, but before doing that, we have to take the natural log. So let's go ahead and set L equal to the limit in question. So that's gonna be the limit as x goes to zero to, from above of uh, x to the two x. Then taking the natural log of both sides gives me the natural log of L equals the limit as x goes to zero from above of two x times the natural log of x. But I can maybe take a two out of that and I have the limit as x goes to zero from above of the natural log of x over one over x. That sets up for us to take L'Hopital's rule, so take the derivative of the numerator as well as the denominator. That'll give me one over x over negative one over x squared, and so simplifying that is gonna be minus x. So as x approaches zero, this thing obviously approaches zero. But that's the natural log of our limit. If we exponentiate both sides, that tells us that our limit is the number one because e to the zero is one. So if this limit is equal to one, then multiply by the constant out front tells us that our final limit is four. 
So that means the limit of the nth root of the two bounds are both four, which means by the squeeze theorem, the limit in question must also be four. So I've done other nice limits on the channel before. You should check out the one that's on the screen right now if you'd like to. And that's a good place to stop.